When you mention Warcraft, you can get many responses. People nowadays will talk about WoW or Hearthstone. If they're particularly old, they may even remember Warcraft 2 II and 3 battling out with Command & Conquer during the RTS boom of the mid to late 90s. But today, we go all the way back to the game that started it all, Warcraft, Orcs, and Humans. Not only does this game represent the beginning of Warcraft, it is the perfect representation of all old school real-time strategy games, for better or for worse. Those who do not remember the past are doomed to repeat it. Jorge Santiana. Hello everyone, and welcome back to this video games in film edition of The Completionist, where we don't just beat the games, oh no my friends, we complete them. So much of video gamedom is about who is the most innovative and what game is now the most technologically advanced. However, I've always found that it's just as important to understand where we came from as well as where we are going. To quote the great Winston Churchill, study history, study history, in history lies all of the secrets of statecraft. Or in this case, Warcraft. Let's begin. Here comes a new challenger! Yeah. Danger! If you play video games today, you are familiar with Warcraft. Even though the developer Blizzard has come into a lot of criticism as of late, the popularity of the Warcraft franchise remains intact. Starting off with a number of popular real-time strategy games, the most popular game out of the franchise remains to be World of Warcraft, an MMORPG that has made almost $10 billion in revenue. This inspired Blizzard to head into the world of the motion picture, and the Warcraft movie was born, and it did not do well. While it made more money than any other video game film before it, it was critically panned in the United States. It currently has a 28% on Rotten Tomatoes, mainly being criticized for the basic story. So, why am I looking at the least popular game in the franchise? Because this is where it all began. One of the most popular video game franchises of all time started with this little RTS at the beginning of the 1990s, not to mention that its story is the one that the film is based off of. And what is the story? Well, it's right there in the title. Orcs and humans. Orcs arrive in the realm of humans known as Azeroth. The two races must now battle for supremacy over the realm. It is not the deepest story, which is probably why the story has been revamped a little bit for the Warcraft film. The gameplay also remains very basic compared to RTS standards of today. Manage your resources and battle it out with opposing armies to succeed at your given mission. Now, I am actually a little nervous because I never really complete real-time strategy games that often here on the show. But if I am going to touch a new one, it might as well be one that represents every RTS that came before it. Warcraft Orcs and Humans is the perfect amalgamation of every old school RTS. In fact, I'd argue that you don't need to play any RTS before the first Warcraft. And you may be surprised at how far back that actually goes. We need to talk about Dune. Oh, good lord, no. I am talking about Dune 2, the father of all modern real-time strategy games. It popularized the use of fog of war and resource management to improve the battle experience. Now, the folks over at Blizzard saw this game and loved it. Not only that, but they were surprised to see that no one else had made a game like Dune 2 years after it was released. So Blizzard seized the opportunity. They took the best aspects of Dune 2 and put on a Lord of the Rings skin and voila, Warcraft Orcs and Humans was born. But that's not the only change Blizzard made. Warcraft took the fog of war a step further by allowing you to see the terrain of where you've been, but you can only see enemy buildings and units if you have your own building and units nearby. Now this added a whole new level of strategy that had not been previously seen in any RTS game before. I know where the gold is, but I have no idea if the enemy is going to get there before I do. Warcraft didn't just borrow from Dune 2. 
there were a lot of multiplayer aspects they took as well. See, back in the 80s, there was a game called Modem Wars on the Commodore 64, and while not all incredibly popular, this game was famous for its use of modems to be the very first computer-linked multiplayer game. Warcraft took this and ran with it, taking their much-improved gameplay and allowing people to play against each other on different computers. And this was huge at the time, and the team at Blizzard did not stop there. A few years after Modem Wars was released, Sid Meier's Civilization was released, boasting gameplay on randomized maps. The people of Blizzard took the randomized maps and applied that to the multiplayer. This made Warcraft Orcs and Humans the pinnacle multiplayer experience at the time. That's what makes the first Warcraft so great. If you want to experience what a real-time strategy game felt like before all the big guns started showing up like Command & Conquer and Age of Empires, you don't need to have played everything that I mentioned before. That era is captured perfectly in one single game, for better or for worse. Of course, one will stay worse if one does not look to improve and get better. A game will not be completed, let alone beaten, if you fail to put in the time. So, I'd like all of you at home to join me for another lesson on exactly that. Now, if all of you would please head over to Twitch. Save your energy, Garfield. Nothing you do can spoil. Right there. You can join me for more lectures in how to restore the ancient tomes of the games that we play. Now please join me in my room over at twitch.tv slash The Completionist. Currently I'm working to restore old episodes of The Completionist, thought to be lost to the sands of time. Previous sessions have included a link between Worlds, Assassin's Creed, and soon I'll be tackling Dead Space 2 as well as many, many more. I have restored over 77 tomes. So, come join me to these massive tomes of games at twitch.tv slash, wherever the slashes are available, The Completionist. And of course, you'll get some extra credit if you show up and use your Twitch Prime subscription. Now, back to the lesson. There are many things that Warcraft Orcs and Humans represents. However, even though there was not too much to do, playing through the campaigns became irritating and boring, and a fantasy game about strategy and war should never, ever get boring. Take, for example, the Orcs campaign. Now, I chose this first simply because it came first in the title. I never knew that it would be the most grave mistake I could ever have made. One of the most frustrating things in the game is that the units do not heal over time. For humans, that means you need a priest in every party to serve as a healer. But for orcs, it means you are out of luck. Not only can you not heal your units, but because your opponent is a computer, they can heal faster than I could deal damage. This ended many skirmishes rather very quickly because I could not keep up with enough units. Why didn't I just build more units to keep the battle going? Because there's a massive lack of gold. Gold is important to build almost every unit, and there is a limited amount of gold on every map. This changes the game from figuring out the best strategy to beat my opponents, to find all the gold and build the strongest units as quickly as possible. I would start every mission by scouting out the map to see where the gold is, and then reset the level. After that, it was just the sprint to gold and build as many ranged and spellcaster units as possible. This was because every other unit felt useless. Now the basic ranged unit only cost a little bit more than a regular soldier, but it did the same amount of damage and could do it from far away. Soon, any unit that couldn't attack from far away became useless to me. The spell casting units became even more important than the ranged units towards the end. Not only could they attack from a distance, but they could also summon other strong units. So when the gold is so scarce, a free army becomes a big deal. I would just set up a bunch of summoners in the corners of my village and summon dozens of magical monsters. This became infinitely more frustrating when I could only select four units at a time. So you see, Warcraft introduced group selection to the RTS genre. But at this point, it is at the smallest level. When you have over 20 units at your disposal and you you can only send four at a time, things get tedious. While these were my main issues, there were a lot of other things that came up that equally ruined the overall experience for me. Only being able to build buildings next to other buildings while also being attached to a road is just bad city planning. 
The weirdest thing that would happen was when I would walk directly next to enemy units and they would just stand there and do nothing until I hit them. Now, while all of these did not really ruin my time playing the game, they were tiny mites that kept bugging me over and over and over. Warcraft Orcs and Humans took everything that worked before it and made it all a little bit better. Blizzard has continued to do that with every Warcraft and Starcraft game that came after the very first Warcraft. It is because of this constant improvement in their work that everything in Warcraft, Orcs, and Humans feels clunky. Looking at it now, this game is a perfect reflection of the issues with the Warcraft film. While there are some cool elements, it becomes incredibly hard to focus on because of choices that now feel old hat. It explains why I actually fell asleep during the film and almost fell asleep during this game. While there is no specific completion bonus per se, finishing each story does result in a different ending. As the orcs, you decimate the humans and become the rulers of Azeroth, with civilizations across the sea teased for the next game. Meanwhile, a human victory results in you being declared the defender of the crown and reflecting on how difficult ruling and playing politics shall be. Don't worry if that last one sounds boring and depressing. Only the orc campaign is canonical. Beating this game was not fun. It mostly required finding the nearest gold mine and building as many wizards or warlocks as possible. It never felt like there was a chance to experiment with different tactics or be creative with my armies. I absolutely respect what this game has done for gaming as a whole, but I cannot say that I enjoyed it. When I completed Warcraft Orcs and Humans, there were 14 losses. A lot of these were because I wanted to understand and explore the entire map before each battle. Two campaigns conquered. One orc, one human. But only play the human one if you can. 20 individual units commanded, 10 between each race. However, I only really used a handful unless the mission called for it otherwise. Four units commanded at a time. It's called the buddy system, not the horde system. 26 hours of total playtime and one moment in time that is perfectly encapsulated in this game. Warcraft Orcs and Humans has not aged well. The story feels a bit weak and the controls are downright archaic compared to similar games that would come out only a couple of years later. Now that being said, I'd actually recommend to at least give it a shot. It perfectly encapsulates what a real-time strategy game was before they became the true mainstays of PC gaming that we know today. Warcraft Orcs and Humans is... It's like the Model T Ford. It's fascinating to look back on and experience for a little bit to truly understand how far we have come. But nowadays, I would much rather experience a Ford Mustang. So, with that in mind everyone, I give this game my completionist rating of Play It. That is all the time we have for today, everyone. So please, as always, let us know what you thought about today's episode somewhere on the internet. Don't forget, if you want to see me complete games in real time, head over to twitch.tv slash the completionist and make sure the notifications are on. Uh, I try and stream at least three to four times a week, sometimes for six to 12 hours. I am a madman. Everyone, enjoy the show. I love you very much, and I'll see you next week for the brand new episode. Now. I'm going to read this book until the credits cut. <laughs>